President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency the First Lady, Your Excellency Dr. William Ruto, Excellencies, Friends, I've been asked to speak this morning on behalf of the business community. But Bob was more than a business leader. He was a friend. Once in a lifetime cometh a man who against all expectations wins and succeeds so wildly that his friends, his family, and a whole nation has to celebrate him. When I first met Bob Collymore, he had two strikes against him. The first one was he had to fill the shoes of the phenomenal, visionary, committed, fiery, blunt Michael Joseph. Who could? The second strike against him, I'd rather not talk about, but you know it. But Bob did not fill the shoes of his friend Michael. He made his own shoes. He wove the shoes, he handmade them with his relentless commitment to work. But more than that was his commitment to excellence. He created a higher and much more noble purpose for Safaricom. His passion was to serve his customers intimately every day. And he did serve his customers and Kenyans every day. His mission, beyond the amazing profitability of his company Safaricom and the constant stream of dividends to government, to the taxman, and to his shareholders, his mission was to serve the society he lived in, to change lives, and to build his employees forever. And when you met him, you felt it. Bob made everybody, including his people at Safaricom, want to aspire to be better people and to be better human beings. And he did this with his amazing humility, his humanity, his deep warmth, his unvarnished honesty, and above all, his sense of purpose. Mr. President and friends, very few business people I know in Africa, in Kenya and the world, create products that make our lives genuinely better so that they become such an integral part of our society that we cannot think about them not being there. Bob made Safaricom an intimate and inseparable part of our lives. He made it the enabler of our lives. We wake up with Safaricom. We share our love on Safaricom. We cry our tears and dreams on Safaricom. We transact our business on Safaricom. We pay our salaries on Safaricom. And we give funeral contributions on Safaricom. But of course, Job, my friend said, don't contribute anything. More than that, we share our promotions, our laughters, our joy, and even our emojis on Safaricom. He also did something truly uncommon. He forged a wonderful bond where the people privileged to meet him knew that from the streets to the boardrooms, from the lowest in our society to presidents, when you met him, he changed you. He used to come to my office and call me and say to me, you work in the shadows, but I need you to help me change this country. He was perhaps the greatest advocate for you, Mr. President, and you probably didn't know. I mean, he'd call me some days and say, you know, that article was wrong. That's my friend. You can't do that. And he would chastise me for a whole hour. I forgave him because he was Bob Collymore. 
We shared our burdens together. I got to know him well. I realized he collected African art. I do. He loved jazz. I do. But beyond that, this guy, when he held a saxophone, was like a child with a lollipop. He, he was just unbelievable. You saw another side of him. He caused the friends, he caused all his friends to change. He made us more human, like himself, more willing, more open, more vulnerable. And he got me and a bunch of really straight up guys to unbutton our shirts and relax and be kids again in the presence of each other. He made us people of purpose. He would come to me and call me and say, you know, Kenyans are starving. We need to do Kenyans for Kenya. And I need you behind me because if you don't stand with me, your other colleagues won't. And he'll literally drag me and say, I want an announcement every hour. In fact, every 15 minutes. And I'd do it. So together with the media, we really battered for Kenya. I'll miss him. And I'll miss him very much because last Saturday at 3 p.m., Peter Kenneth, Alikan Sachu, Barak Takra, Jeff Koenange, and I had our last meeting with him. And Joshua Oigara was on the line in his living room. And after many things, he said to me, I don't know about this heaven and earth thing. I really don't know about this life after death thing. But I really, really hope there's life after death. So I said, what do you mean by that? And if you've met him, he's got a twinkle in his eye. So he goes, if there are ghosts, I will come and rustle the curtains. On, on the birthdays, when you light a candle for my kids, I'll come and blow it and it'll go off. And you light it again and I'll blow it. And you light it again and I'll blow it. That's the man we lost. Calmly, he told us, if I get three more days, I'll be lucky. We asked him what we must do. And he said, stay together and stand by one boy. At the next boys club dinner on the 19th of July, we will set a place for our captain, as we called him, and raise our glasses, knowing he has changed Kenya and ourselves forever. For one boy and the kids, all I can say is you gave him a new purpose in life and you added an amazing spring to his step. As I end today, for those of us and for those of you who are natural born Kenyans and for those of us who are foreign born but Kenyan by choice, I say this, the question Bob Colimo asks of us is this, what deposit do you leave for your country? Thank you.